Welcome to Psychology Daf. We are in Gomorrah Sukkah Daf Nun Beis. And today we're going to talk about one of my most favorite of all time psychological Gomorrahs as the Gomorrah discusses the Yetzer Hara and the Yetzer Atov and the variable perspective that goes into experiencing the evil and good inclination. So the Gemara on Omar Aleph tells us about the fate of the wicked and the righteous at the end of days. The Gemara says, in the future, at the end of days, God will bring the evil inclination and slaughter it in the presence of the righteous and in the presence of the wicked. For the righteous, the evil inclination appears to them as a high mountain, and for the wicked, it appears to them as a mere strand of hair. These weep and those weep. The righteous weep and say, how were we able to overcome so high a mountain? In other words, they are thinking to themselves and feeling uh, 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 trauma and anguish and tears of relief that they are able to overcome such a formidable opponent. And the wicked weep and say, how were we unable to overcome this strand of hair? And even the Holy One, blessed be he, will wonder with them as it is stated with regard to the eulogy. So says the Lord of hosts, it would be wondrous in the eyes of the remnant of the people in those days. It should be wondrous in my eyes. In other words, even Hashem wonders at how the tzaddikim were able to overcome the Yetzirahara. Now, the commentaries make a number of important points, although, of course, this Gemara speaks for itself. And I will share some of my own as well. So Yesharim notes that the Gemara uses the word nidme, it appeared, in reference to both the righteous and the evil's perception of the evil inclination. His point being that they both were illusory. And he says the truth is that they both have truth because it's hard in the beginning to overcome the eight Sahara, and yet easy in the end. I think we can intuitively understand how that works, desirable and strong at a certain point, but once we overcome it, it can become easier. But that's only true some of the time. Avi Nachal explains the difference in perceptions between the righteous and the evil in the famous dictum of Kol Godol Mechavero Yitzro Godol Heimeno. Anyone who is greater than another, his evil inclination is greater than this, which indeed the Gemara later refers to. Why is this so? Ben Yehoyada explains that it gets bigger over time. The longer the desire is squelched, the stronger it gets. And there is some truth to the notion that it's harder to sustain a continuous effort. That is why in the recovery community, there is a focus on one day at a time. Because if you look at an issue in the moment in front of you, and only that moment, it feels much less like a mountain. However, the classic explanation for why the greater the person, the greater their evil inclination is, that everything must be balanced for there to be free choice. And if someone has the capacity to do much good, inherently and intrinsically there must be capacity to do an equal amount of evil. That explanation doesn't really sit well with me, not because it isn't true in ways, but because um, it's incomplete. It, I think that there's something to the very act of resisting sin that can magnify sin. And that's because aggression itself, frustration, and lack of, uh, and lack of contentment is itself the tool of the evil inclination. Therefore, sometimes in our efforts to fight the evil within us, we end up disabling ourselves and hurting ourselves by discrediting and frustrating basic instincts. And I think that that is the true meaning for why the evil inclination can appear to be both a hare or a mountain, because unwittingly in our efforts to fight it, we sometimes make it grow. Happiness and contentment is not an easy state to reach, but it most certainly cannot be reached directly. It cannot be reached by forcing yourself to be happy, nor can it be reached by forcing yourself to sin in a manner that is disrespectful to your basic wishes, wants, or needs. It's similar to what I brought up in yesterday's daf, as it says in the Gemara Sanhedrin on 107b, Kofsayin Abed Beis, that the Gemara advises that one should not attack the Yetzirah directly, but more gently and roundabout. Yetzir tinuk ve'isha te'ismal docha ve'yamin mekarevis. With regard to the evil inclination, the Gemara says, to a child and to a woman, the left hand should drive away and the right hand should draw them near. Now, essentially, the Gemara is saying that with sensitive emotional people, 
and sensitive emotional parts of the personality as well. If you will, the child within, one should be gentle and patient in trying to suppress improper behavior. So what does this mean on a practical level? It means we should treat ourselves like we should aspire to treat our own children. That is, with respect, love, and encouragement, even while we're offering guidance and correction. I like to say feelings are like noisy children in the back of a car during a long car trip. The more you tell them to be quiet, the more frustrated they become, and the more trouble they make. They must be dealt with and listened to on their own terms. It's hot in the back of the car. They're restless. They're bored. Somebody's picking on them, etc. Of course they need discipline, but they are still kids jumping around the back of the car after all. So too with all the feelings banging around inside your head. Yes, in some way you need to manage them, but you must respect them and give them their due. That means not being repulsed or angry at yourself with your needs, but instead to accept them as part of being human, and then to ask yourself what is helpful and healthy and what's a good way to work with them. Remember, if you try to fight with yourself, it's unlikely you'll win because your opponent is a very equal match.